Those opening shots with some muzzle flash were of the Underwood ammo, 10 millimeter, 135 grain Nosler jacketed hollow point. High velocity, high energy. And here's the number that I think has caught some folks' attention and why I've had so many requests to test this. Check out that advertised velocity. 1,600 feet per second. Moving along for this 40 caliber bullet. Now I don't know what barrel length that Underwood was using to get that number, but I'm running tonight with the Glock 20. This is the SF or short frame model. 4.6 inch factory barrel using the factory spring. And there are my five shots from 10 feet. Looking good, we're going in the right direction. And there's my five shot average. Just missed it. 1,594 feet per second and an amazing 762 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Probably not a hunting load. I think you want to go heavier in the 10 millimeter, but it's your choice. This is more than likely going to be a pretty good personal defense round. This is actually the second test of this particular cartridge within the past 24 hours. The previous test was with a clear block from clearballistics.com. That block was 16 inches in length, weighed only about 20 pounds, so that video has been posted. Now this is the sim test that I've been using since early 2011. It has been recalibrated from its original format so that it is comparable with 10% ordnance gel. This block is approximately 50 pounds and just about 21 inches in length. Taking this shot from 10 feet. So how do you get a 50 pound block of ballistic testing media to lift one to two inches off the table? You tag it with 135 grains of nozzle moving at 1600 feet per second. That was funny. No pass through, specifically on the bottom, so I was just a couple of inches above that. This is just a preliminary measurement, but I wanted you to see this process. This is the right side of the block. It looks like we tracked down and out of the block. That is not the case. Lost the track on this side. Let's go over to the left side. We came in. It indeed did track down and actually curved to the left, tracked back up, and curved back out toward the right, almost poked through this side of the slice. That's how I found it, actually. You can see there's a fragment. But the leading edge, just preliminary, right at 11 inches, maybe a tad bit over, and if you did see the clear gel test, it came in at 10 and a half. So not much difference, but in both cases, the shot is what I would call porpoising. Not too many more enhancements that I can show. Here on the right side, this is about a quarter inch deep, and then it gets a little deeper out to about half an inch. You can see the fragment here. Up on the right side, coming in. You don't see too much of the exposed permanent cavity, but this is about half inch deep, running out to about three quarters. So at its deepest, uh, widest point, it's probably going to be an inch deep, combining both sides of this. And you don't really see much of the permanent cavity on the surface, but it ends about right there, because this is where the bullet starts to settle down. So about five and a half inches from what I can see here. With regard to the bullet, did confirm the leading edge of that is at 11 inches, and it is really deformed. Hello, there we go. I knew that was going to happen sooner or later. There's a look at it. Let me get that cleaned up. Get some measurements for you. There's a high end on expanded diameter, but the average drops all the way down to 0.587 inches. Retained weight is coming in just over 110 grains. You can see it deviating just a little bit. These two pieces right here that I could find out in the open, those combined weigh approximately 7 grains. So we're still missing 18 grains of metal. So now we have results for two formats, the Icicle of Thor, as I call it up there at the top, that is the extracted 
wound channel from that first test and the clear gel. And then, of course, what we did just a moment ago with the sim test. Similar results, especially with regard to penetration. That's amazing that we didn't have that much of a difference between those two. The other interesting thing was the similarities that we had in the bullet path itself, that porpoising effect, which I rarely rarely see that in this format. The bullets usually just plow straight on through. They might deviate to one side or another, but nothing like that where they porpoise uh, and, and so forth. Very interesting. So we're consistent in that regard. Expansion, I mean this bullet took a beating in both tests. Uh, we had better weight retention and better form, if you want to call it that, over there on the right with the clear gel test. But you have to ask yourself, is this bullet design and this weight being pushed too fast at this velocity? Which again, the velocities are good, they're accurate, they're true, and I appreciate that. Uh, but is this bullet design being pushed too fast for that? So you have to ask yourself, given what you've seen here, high energy, a really tremendous stretch cavity that we could see uh, mostly in the clear gel test, that temporary cavity, is that a trade-off? Will you take that as opposed to this type of penetration? It's your call. Thanks for watching.